So we're back and uh, joined by Andy from the Shortwave set. Pretty stunning, uh, pretty stunning set there. Yeah, short and sweet. Short and That's sweet. how we like to the it. Point. Yeah, yeah, directly to the point. Yeah, yeah. Mark Jones has obviously made a, a hot pick there with you guys, obviously being signed to his label right. as well. Did a nice little cover there. Tell us a bit about that. Obviously, that was kind of uh, Mark's decision. Mark actually sent us a text a little while back saying, "Oh, do you know any covers?" And we happened to know that they just signed Grace to Grace Jones. So I think we replied kind of semi-flippantly, slave to the rhythm. Didn't really know why he was asking or what he wanted it for, but then it kind of became apparent we was actually going to have to play it. So then we had to like learn the track and, uh, and sort it out. But it actually is a great track. No, she didn't know the words. No, no, no. We rehearsed it once last night. Um, but uh, well for a, a one, it was okay. One she thought that uh, Marika, the, the the singer in the in the band, thought that it would be pretty foolproof if she had the lyrics on the back of her melodica, you know. So that was she just <laughs> kind of yeah, so yeah, and like she just like hold it up occasionally, and and people would be totally fooled. But I think she fooled no one. Tonight is all about the uh, San Miguel Hidden Depths sort of collaborations, unique collaborations part of the series. I mean, one of the things you've got on your album is John Cale from the Velvet Underground. It doesn't really get much better than that. I mean, you must have thought that was a bit of a coup. Yeah, I mean, we did, you know. I mean, but it was a, it was a weird place we were in at the time because, you know, we made our first record in our bedrooms pretty much. And um, then when we got kind of like whisked off to Los Angeles to make our second record, that was so weird that for that to happen, you know, we made the record with Danger Mouse, but that was so weird that anything that happened subsequently to that almost didn't seem that weird. It's like being inside a dream and then something weird happens inside a dream, you kind of accept it. There's definitely like an air on the album, there's something kind of a little bit dark and a little bit textured, which I think maybe might have appealed to his sensibilities, given what he brought to like the Velvet Underground and stuff. And we're all massive fans of Nico and the Velvet Underground. And so, you know, he's always been present in our music before now. So the fact that he was into it and was prepared to contribute was like amazing for us. What do you make of this whole kind of concept of, of this hidden depth thing? This whole idea of you know unique collaboration, something a little bit different. Some of these like actual inspirations and musical influences coming together. Yeah, I, I, I think it's great because you know it, it's like an expansion of how bands are anyway. You know, when you think of like a band, it's like a collection of individuals, mm. and and hopefully the sum of the parts is like is greater than than you are kind of individually. So expanding that out outside the band and kind of working with other people as we found with working with um, you know John Cale, Van Ock Parks, Danger Mouse, it's just like it's just like expanding out your influences in the group and it can only kind of take you to places that maybe you wouldn't have gone, you wouldn't have thought of if it wasn't for, for those outside influences. So I find it really stimulating and really kind of um, beneficial to, to the band. So yeah, I think it's great. Andy, thank you very much for joining us and uh, yeah, have a good night. Thank you very much.